Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Metrum Institute's course on um, advanced pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic modeling topics known as MI212. Um, my name is Mark Gastongay. I'm the course director, and I'll be the instructor for the majority of these lectures as well. Today uh, is our first uh, introductory meeting, and really what I want to get through today is just some of the basics, basic logistics of how we're going to communicate, what the expectations are for the course, uh, what the different tools are that we're working with, and, um, and hopefully to resolve any of the technical issues around any of that. Uh, and actually next week we'll start right in with uh, some content and some hands-on modeling. So first of all, if you're on board, uh, that means you did register for the webinar and uh, you've, you are using the uh, GoToWebinar tool to uh, view and listen to these lectures. In order to communicate through that tool, uh, the easiest way to do that is to get my attention by posting a question. And I'll try to pause throughout the lectures this semester uh, as will other instructors, but if you have a, uh, an immediate question or something you want to just make a note of, uh, there is a question field in your GoToWebinar control panel, and you can select that question field, type in a question, and uh, then the instructor will be notified that there's a, a question pending. We'll do our best to get to these in a timely manner, uh, or we may uh, collect them and wait to the end of a of a particular topic area, but uh, this is the best way to get our attention. Now, those are for questions about the course material and so on. If there are technical difficulties with the webinar, uh, difficulties in viewing or, or hearing the audio or whatever other technical difficulties, there's there's an immediate resource you can go to, and that's uh, and that's also posted on, on the website. You can go to to uh, Joe Hebert. Um, and he's got a phone number listed and uh, an email address um, that have been posted on your webinar chat. Contact Joe during the course of the class if you have difficulties hearing or viewing the session. Now for other technical difficulties we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so first step is that uh, you're all on board with GoToWebinar and you're functional with that. Looks like, uh, yes, Susan, you found the question spot. <laughs> uh, question just posted here. Um, so um, it should be uh, pretty intuitive once you, once you find it. There's that question tab, and you just type in your question. And then I'll see who, who requested the question and at what time it was received. Most of the time, I won't type back the answer. I'll just answer it uh, through the audio. Uh, but if it's necessary, uh, I, I can also type back a response. Okay, great. <clears throat> Next, I wanted to move to the um, course website. When we use this uh, Moodle-based um, content management system for, for educational institutions, and it works really well for us in Metrum Institute. If you've taken earlier webcast courses with us, you're familiar with this tool. Let me introduce you to it just in case you're not familiar with it. Here's, here's the home page for our course, MI212. And you see a, a variety of options here. I'm going to turn off the editing to make it a little cleaner. Um, and what we see here is the weekly outline, uh, week by week topic areas. And this is where we're going to post all of the content for the course. Um, but there's also uh, an option here to look at three different uh, forums. One is a news forum. This will be news about the course, upcoming events, uh, um, requirements and so on. There's a discussion forum. The discussion forum is to be used by all of the class participants and the instructors to discuss or ask questions about course material. And uh, these questions can be posted and directed to the instructor, but any student is welcome to, to pitch in the answer here or to start, start an extended discussion off of that. This is all archived as part of this website. And you can set this up to have, e I think you are already set up by default so that you'll get email notifications when there's something posted there. And then finally, there's a technical support 
uh, forum. And this is where you post questions about any other technical support issues. That means if you have difficulty accessing this training site, the, the, the MI212 homepage, uh, if you have difficulty in logging in to this page or to the um, SIMI web server that we're going to be using to run the hands-on examples, if you have difficulty accessing the audiovisual recordings or viewing those, post all of those questions to this technical support. We've got somebody monitoring that all the time and uh, we'll respond um, pretty quickly to your questions there. So you'll notice that, uh, there, that this is set up with the topics in the middle. There's a few uh, ancillary uh, links on the sides here, uh, the, the forums. We're also going to have uh, exams and quizzes, which you'll be able to access through this site too. Um, but essentially, it's, it's, it's basically a content management website, uh, probably pretty similar to, to some of the project sharing sites you might have used before. Okay, so there's a few things I want to run through uh, today, and that's in the, the week one se section here. Um, you'll notice that there's a, uh, an entry for each week of the course. Uh, for now, let's start with week one. So we'll start off with this, this element here called course requirements. So lots of you are taking this uh, course as part of your training for, for your job. Others are taking it as part of a, an educational requirement, uh, maybe even a degree-related um, training course. But uh, there, there are some criteria here that, that I'd like you to adhere to um, if you wish to receive a certificate of completion at the end of this course. So the first is to attend the class or watch the recordings. And just as a reminder, Tuesdays are the lecture days, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern time. And lab sessions are Fridays, 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, all of the lectures and labs are recorded, both audio and visual, so you can catch up with those if you miss them. You know, listen to the recordings at your own pace, at your own time. Uh, but please do try to keep up with these. Secondly, I'd like you to attempt the homework problems each week before the Friday lab sessions. What we'll do is, in, on the Tuesday session, usually cover a concept and then introduce some of the uh, technical implementation of that in, in a particular tool. And the tools we're going to be using in this class are R and non-MEM. Um, but uh, we'd like you to try to attempt the, the homework problem, which is usually derived from the demo we'll do in the class before we run through it on Friday. Again, there's no way that I can that I can enforce either one or two here. Uh, we're just asking you to participate uh, if, if you're going to have a certificate of completion. Um, but the third one that I, I, we can enforce, and the third one is we'd like you to take the exams. You know, it doesn't really matter what the grade is unless you're taking this for, for credit. Uh, but this is good feedback to us uh, to help us understand where we're communicating well or which topic areas might need more work. And it also is evidence that you're participating in the course. So as a requirement for re receiving a course completion certificate, we'd like you to do all three of those pieces. Further, for those st students enrolled in the Metrum Institute Pharmacometric Certificate Program, I'm just reminding you that, that in order to get credit for this course, you must average a grade of B or better across those three exams. Each of those exams is going to be worth one third of the total grade. There's no additional component to your grade. There's no classroom project in this course. It's just the exams. Um, they're going to be multiple choice exams. They'll be taken through the web form. If, if some of you took the MI210 class last semester, it's going to be very similar to that. Um, they're open book, open notes, whatever you'd like. You can use any resources to answer these, these quiz questions. But we do ask that you do them independently um, again, uh, we can't enforce that directly, but uh, we're, we're hoping that, uh, that you'll follow through with that on the honor system. So those are the requirements for this course. Uh, if you have questions, contact me. I've got my contact info listed below. I'd, you know, if it's something uh, a little bit more 
uh, a personal question or, or something you want to directly contact me, you can use my direct email. If it's a question regarding course material or a modeling question that you think others might benefit from, I'd encourage you to please submit the question through the discussion forum. Uh, that way, um, others will benefit from, from that discussion and potentially somebody else could jump in and answer your question before I even have a chance to get to it. Okay, so those are the course requirements. We'll go back. Now, each week we will record the lectures and we'll post a link to those recordings in a couple of formats on the week's um, block here in the calendar. So this is weeks September 21st through 27th. As soon as we, or, or very shortly after we get off the air today, uh, we will post the recording link here. Okay, and that, that's going to be one of your assignments. Uh, we'll, we'll review that in a minute. But you'll find the course recordings each week posted in the weekly segment. So let's take a look at what we're going to cover this semester. Today's just an introductory class, but next week we'll start with some advanced pharmacostatistical topics, including inter-occasion variability and mixture models. Both of these are uh, essential components uh, for modeling uh, random variability in mixed effects models, and they're quite common in, in many of the population PKPD type uh, applications. So we're going to go through the theory. Uh, we'll look at a couple of articles in the literature and we'll run through some hands-on examples for each of these. Following that, we're going to uh, have a, a pretty intensive session on, on uh, the treatment of BQL data and, and some of the um, pharmacostatistical models and methods used there. We'll even uh, we'll, we'll stick to the maximum likelihood approaches like, like those implemented in non-MEM, but we'll also illustrate um, how this can easily be solved using Bayesian methods. You'll notice that after that I have listed exam one. Right now if you click that exam link it's going to be empty, but I'll be populating uh, some content there. And um, this is going to be our first exam. Uh, I've segmented this so that the exams are uh, focused on similar topic areas. So these pharmacostatistical topics will form the basis of exam one. And just keep in mind that uh, what I'm looking for in the exams is that you understand the concepts. The exams are not going to be questions about uh, coding syntax and that sort of stuff. Uh, that's useful for you to know, but it's not really the point of this course. The point of this course is to teach the concepts. And so we're going to focus the questions on concepts. At the end of each lecture notes, you'll, you'll find some study guide questions, and those study guide questions are really uh, a good hint as to what sort of content will be on the exams. So then after that week, we're going to move on to a series of advanced PK modeling and advanced PKPD modeling topics. Um, the first one in the PK section, we'll talk a bit about parameter identifiability, and then we'll illustrate that issue with uh, nonlinear and time-dependent PK models and target-mediated pharmacokinetics. Then we'll roll into another related topic, uh, models for parent and metabolite data, and then similarly models for, for plasma and urine data. So these are uh, pharmacokinetic situations that, uh, that are often common in early development or even in non-clinical um, pharmaceutical development. Uh, and uh, we'll have a few examples um, on each of these cases to run through. Uh, again, addressing the issues of parameter identifiability um, and model implementation, as well as how, how we code these. From there, we move to some PKPD topics. And there's a variety of topics here. We'll start off just reviewing some of the indirect pharmacodynamic response models, and then get into uh, models for time-dependent PD, uh, models for multiple endpoints using these sort of turnover implementations um, just to set the basis. And then uh, something a little more complicated, uh, precursor pool models, uh, models for time-dependent baseline or circadian baseline. Um, that, that'll take us through all the way up to week eight 
where we're going to talk about uh, lifespan and transit models, uh, usually for um, drugs that have effects on the hematopoietic poetic, um, systems, uh, where we're dealing with, with cellular lifespans um, in, in one mechanism or another. So there's a lot to cover there, uh, but uh, there's been some nice uh, publications in the literature recently, and um, we, we've got some good examples to follow on. That'll sort of end that segment on the advanced you know, uh, structural PKPD models, and that will bring us through exam number two. From there through the rest of the course, we've got um, some related topics. One, one is the first is disease progression models. So we'll talk about uh, the typical slope intercept type models, other variations on that theme, uh, mechanistic models, um, and so on. In week 10, we'll talk about clinical trial simulation. We'll review some of the basics of simulation uh, and then get into how to structure multi level random effects as part of your simulations with an extension into week 11 where we talk about incorporating the uncertainty in model parameters and potentially the uncertainty in the models themselves, uh, which also lends itself to a simulation sensitivity analysis, which is an important step in, in, in the trial simulation work. And finally, the last week, we'll look at evaluation of study designs, either through simulation estimation based methods or the information theoretic approaches, such as those that use the population Fisher information matrix. That's capped off with our final exam on those um, topics of disease progression, trial design, evaluation. Uh, and so again, that, that's sort of a common theme again that we'll uh, tie together in that last exam. So that's the plan for this semester. There's gonna be a lot of work and uh, I, Hope that we can all stay on track here because it, it will be difficult to catch up if you fall too far behind. Uh, but if you find that the pace is too, too quick or that you need some extra help or extra time, please uh, reach out and, and let me know. Okay, while I was going through that, I, I noticed a few questions coming up on the uh, question block. So I'll, I'll address those now. Uh, let's see. Well, we have course materials for the home study. Yeah, we'll have some course materials. Uh, today, I'm not assigning anything except for a couple of articles to read, and we'll, we'll go through that in a minute. But starting next week, you'll have the, the hands-on examples, the code, the data sets, as well as the lecture notes from the lecture next week. Uh, will the new estimations and methods in non-MEM7 be used, or only the classical methods? Well, the topic of this course is not so much estimation methods, and in fact, we did cover uh, a variety of the estimation methods in last semester's course, the MI210 class. Um, we can, from time to time, as we're talking about uh, one of these advanced PKPD topics, is throw, throw in a new estimation method and discuss that a bit, but um, this is not a course focused on uh, you know, the, the new estimation methods in MM7. I think there's plenty of courses out there that deal with that. Uh, we did run through these in the, in the class last semester, and uh, we're not going to have time to go in, into detail on those new estimation methods as part of this class. Uh, but from time to time, if, if we want to try an, an estimation method for one of these models, uh, we, we could easily do that. Let's see, a few more questions. Okay. If you have questions about uh, technical difficulties with, with the webinar, remember, please contact Joe Hebert on this, um, and he'll, he'll help you with that. The last topic I want to cover today is your assignment for this week. So we'll click on the Assignment tab. So there's two things that I'd like you to do as soon as possible, and that would be nice either today or, or, or tomorrow. Uh, is to log in to the SIMI application. This is the uh, uh, server interface by Metrum Institute, uh, which basically exposes the non-MEM uh, software through an R interface um, to all of you to use to do the hands-on work. Uh, I would like you to log into the SIMI server. You should all have login credentials by this point. If you don't, 
post a question to the technical support forum. Uh, but uh, I know that you all received this as part of your uh, initiation um, information when you when you registered for the course. Some of you who may have registered in the last day or so may have not caught up to this, but uh, but please check it out. Log in to the server. And I'd like you to play around with that. It's just a, a nice, simple interface I'm going to show you here. Um, here's what the interface looks like. After, there's a login screen before this, but uh, once you get through the login screen, you'll see this sort of an interface. And I'd like you to, to play around with something. Um, you can download a file that might be there or, or maybe upload a file. You choose a file, you, you get a dialog box here, and you can... Um, upload a file, try a text file, uh, and then once it's up in here, um, for example, if it's a text file, oops, sorry about that, I lost connection, uh, you might want to um, explore editing that text file, um, maybe make an edit, save the file, then download it back to your, to your local directory. Just try a few file manipulations like that just to make sure that, um, uh, that your account is functional and that you have some familiarity with how to work around this. So that's that's the semi interface. This is your one of your assignments this week is to play around with this interface, upload a file, edit a file, download it, and so on. Assignment number two is to log into to this site here, that the 212 course site. Uh, and access the recording of this lecture, and, and I just want you to down, just want you to to listen to the lecture for a few minutes, just to make sure that it works. Okay, we we'd like to solve any problems related to this uh, this week, if possible, so that they're not interfering with the progression of the course we start as we start next week. So please um, try that. Listen to the, to this week's recording. Again, report any problems to the technical support forum. And when you do that, make sure that you're including enough information. For example, the operating system of your computer, the web browser you're using, the version, and so on. And then finally, uh, a couple of homework assignments that would be helpful to read in preparation for the next class. It's not mandatory because we'll be reviewing some of these concepts, but uh, I'd like you to go and take a look at uh, two articles here, especially the first one, The Importance of Modeling IOV in Population PK Analyses. This is the original paper describing intrication variability. And then there's also a, um, a paper that's a, sort of a summary of uh, applications with the mixture modeling in non-MEM. Also an interesting read before the class. So I'd like you to, to uh, track down those papers and read them, please. Okay, I'm just going to run through the questions again. Um, I would, and a lot of you are asking if we're going to provide the papers here. Because of copyright reasons, uh, I really can't provide those papers. Uh, hopefully you all have access to a library where you can get these. Um, if, uh, if you have uh, difficulties accessing them, uh, don't worry about it. We'll cover the, the basics of, of, of the uh, content in the lecture notes. Uh, but if you have access to journals, uh, I'd, I'd advise you to, to try to read these. Sorry that we can't uh, we can't copy and, and post these. Uh, we'll get in trouble with uh, with the copyright police on that one. Okay, um, that's the bulk of what I had for today. That's the introductory content. Uh, again, we want to make sure that everything's in place before we hit the ground running next week. Are there any additional questions before we log off for today? Okay, well, looks looks like uh, we're all set for now. So please uh, run through your assignments uh, as soon as possible, and you have a little extra time today. We're not going to have a lab session on Friday, so use that time to, to check out these uh, your access to these different tools and also to read the papers and next Tuesday we'll start in with intrication variability and mixture models.
we'll uh, we'll sign off now, and uh, shortly after uh, we sign off here, there will be a posting of the recording. Uh, and again, please give that a try. Thanks all for your attention. I'm looking forward to working with you this semester. And uh, I think we've got uh, a really interesting set of topics uh, and should be some fun. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. And thank you for your attention. Bye for now.